Okay. Time dilation. Is this real at all? So again, muons are particles that decay on average every two microseconds. They decay to three things. Right? How do we see this particle decay? This is the particle at rest. And then I'm going to put a counter in here. The counter is going to count time. So starts counting one microseconds, two microseconds, and the, the muon decays into these three particles, one, two, right? Just the muon in there. So notice that at two microseconds, this goes up. And you have the same particle moving closer to the velocity of light. And you see the particle moving that way, and this is an, uh, the x-axis. And again, you expect if the particle is moving at 98% of the velocity of light, and in case in two microseconds, you expect to travel two kilometers. So you expect this guy to come in here and to blow up in here. And it doesn't happen. And what happens is, because the velocity is so high, the gamma factor is about five. That means the time dilation is about five. Instead of decaying, instead of living two microseconds, in our reference frame, in our reference frame, we see the time as being 10 microseconds because it's, a, it's multiplied by a factor of 10. So at that point, you see this not decaying here, but decaying there at 10. And one thing I should have really draw is that if neons do not have really size, so really I'm cheating when I do this. Uh, but they, if they had size, how would you see this size? You would see it contract, right? That's the way you see it. So let's use the same example again, muons. But now, real muons, actually, what happens is we have the universe filled with particles going very, very fast. Some of these particles hit the upper layers of the atmosphere for these muons, and muons are producing up. So let's see how both things see, how we see it from the base of the mountain, a muon coming down, and how the muon sees coming down to the base of the mountain. So as you view this in the reference frame, the landscape has its normal size. If the muon had size, you would see it flatten like a pancake, like it did there. And the muon trough, the way you see it, is running five times slower. Right? So instead of decaying, instead of, of going, of traveling only two kilometers, it travels 10 before decaying. Now, how does the muon see that? In the reference frame of the muon, if you were coming down with the muon, you would see that the muon has its own normal size, right? Something like that. The landscape now is moving, but the landscape, since it's moving, is flattened like a pancake, so you see something like that. And the muon clock in its own reference frame is going to run normally because it's its own reference frame. The bottom line is, that the muon in this case will travel, for all the muon nodes, will travel two kilometers at a normal speed and a normal clock time, and it will decay at the base of the mountain. In this frame, you see the muon, you would see the muon traveling more with a delayed clock. So it's still got, going to decay in the base of the mountain. And I think that's the most important thing. No matter how you see, no matter what frame you stand on, you can even be on a third frame, you're always going to tell the same thing the muons will be decaying at the base of the mountain. So this time, this time dilation, this length contraction, it doesn't matter. This is all a point of view for one reference frame. The results you get are always going to be the same. OK, this is, this is a very hard uh, thing to do. I will just tell you the basic of this. Uh, this is another experiment that says how much changes depending on the reference frame. So imagine two, you have two balls that bounce uh, against each other and they bounce perfectly symmetrically. That's like that. And imagine now you go in, in one frame that moves with this ball. It moves in this component, not really with the ball, because the ball goes also down, but it moves like that, in this direction. In that reference frame, you will see this ball just going down and back, bouncing against the ball that goes like that. And of course, the same is true if you go to this reference frame. The reference frame that moves like this, you would see something like that in the reference frame. And now, you can just use conservation of momentum to this place. And that is going to tell you that the mass, in principle, the masses in here are the same. You can have this system and this collision happen with two equal masses. But the mass in here does not necessarily have to be the same. 
So the mass of the zero particle and the mass of the one particle are is two in here. And if you use other equations, you actually see that the ratio between the masses depends on the velocity between the two centers. That's telling you now also that not, a, not, not only time, not only length, also masses depend on the reference length. And they, they depend also based on this gamma cap. If you measure some mass in here, and there's something moving over there with some velocity, they will measure the different mass. Right, so let's switch topics completely. That was the basic of, of special relativity. And let's talk a bit about simultaneity. Let's, see, let's talk about what is an event in relativity. An event is something that happens at a specific place and time. For example, this is an event that happens at some time, like that, uh, in, in, in some position, or it was one. And this is something else that happens in another position and another time. It doesn't have to be related at all, it's just like two events. Right? And from a reference event, from a reference frame that's moving with respect to this reference frame, you can use the, the equations before. And in fact, you will see, by, by using the, the, the Lorentz equation, the Lorentz transformation, that this is what you get. This is, the, this is the difference in length you measure from this reference frame, and this is the difference in time between these two events that you measure in that reference frame. So now, assume these two events are simultaneous in this reference frame. Right? It's a simultaneous. It happen at the same time. Two lights going on. The question is, does, the, does a person in this reference frame see this as simultaneous? No. Why not? Because they are at a different distance away. These two events are not seen as simultaneous. In fact, if, this, if that reference frame is moving in that direction, you see that a person in that reference frame is seeing this one happening first and this one happening later. Of course, if you were to go the other way around, you will see this happening first and that happening later. So the event in the direction of the moving reference frame happened first. Because this guy see the light coming from that one to it first. And let me ask you something. If these two events are simultaneous, can these two events be related? Can one of, one of them be the cause of each other? Why not? Because, well, there has to be something that would explain the cause of that. Would, they have to be something that what? Uh, I'm trying to, uh, there, there would have to be something that would cause. They, they can't be the cause of it. So. Well, so they if these two things are simultaneous, but you see them here as non-simultaneous, right? So in this pattern of frame, they may have a side. Right. I thought it was mutual causality doesn't exist. I think. So that's exactly right. So it might be these two events, because they happen simultaneously in one reference frame. There's one reference frame in which these two events are simultaneous. And there's no signal that can cover this distance in that reference frame generating the causality. Right? If I have a bullet and I shoot a base, the bullet will go off my gun and hit the base. That would be E1 and E2. But it has to travel. It has to spend some time traveling. And if these are simultaneous, there's no way, there's no causality that can be done on that. Now, this is sort of tricky, because then you say, then I say, ah, but there's a, there's a frame in which this is not the case. There's a frame in which these two are not simultaneous. So in principle, there could be a signal that translates from one point to another. But the answer is also no. The, the special relativity is so well constructed that if it is simultaneous. In one sim if there is one reference frame in which it is simultaneous, you can guarantee that there's not going to be another one in which they are casually related. 